the special meeting of the police jury dated Tuesday, March 29, 2011. We'll have the invocation by Ms. Griffin followed by the pledge. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight just asking you to extend our territory so that we may be the servants that you have called us to be. And we ask for your special blessing as we take care of business for your people. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Yes, sir. Mr. Andropont? Mr. Collins? Here. Mr. Farnham? Here. Mrs. Griffin? Present. Mr. Guidry? Here. Mr. Hassan? Here. Mr. Landry? Dr. Mackey? Present. Mr. McMillan? Here. Mr. Landry is present. Yes, sir. Mr. Scott? Here. Mr. Spell? Here. Mr. Stelly? Here. Mr. Sias? Present. Mrs. Trimmy? Here. And President Brain? Here. We do have a quorum. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Uh, if you have, if you would like to speak on the agenda item tonight, there's some blue slips in the back of the room. If you just fill them out, they look like this, and just bring them up to Jessica, and she'll get them to us. Also, if you have a cell phone, if you'll just silence it for us tonight, and we'd just like to welcome everyone here tonight. So thank you uh, very much. We'll go to item five. Hold a public hearing at 5.30 p.m. as advertised in accordance with the applicable laws to receive public comment and input on a proposed plan for the redistricting of the police jury single member single member districts following the 2010 census to be submitted to appropriate state agencies and the u.s department of justice mr bean thank you mr president this public hearing tonight of course follows the initial presentation to you last week uh, last thursday march the 24th by the staff of a redistricting plan for each of the 15 single member districts our uh, suggestion tonight for going forward is to allow Mr. Cole to present basically what he did last Thursday to you and at that point afterwards take any questions you may have and then at that point open it up for public comment which we will record and make sure all these are submitted to the Department of Justice in accordance with federal regulations on this and this is strictly for public comment tonight. Um, and we will also follow this between now and the, uh, through April 7th is a continued public comment period. And as a part of your April 7th meeting, we will also have another public hearing as a part of that meeting. So with that, I'll ask Mr. Cole to come up to the podium and address <coughs> the public and you with the proposed redistricting plan. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Cade, if you'd just state your name and address. Uh, Cade Cole. Um, I'm happy to be here, Mr. President, members of the jury. Uh, the point of tonight's meeting, as Mr. Beam stated, is to allow the public an opportunity to comment. Now, uh, thankfully, unlike the plans that are uh, in, in Baton Rouge, uh, ours seems to be less controversial than, than many alternatives out there, and so hopefully there, there's not much, uh, not much comment. But we welcome the public's involvement. We, uh, that was the point of this, to make sure everyone has an opportunity to be heard uh, we're here to listen and make uh, any adjustments that, that work. Um, effectively, we want to go over the plan and we'll kind of reorientate ourselves um, to allow us, the, the public, to see the maps. Really, last week it was more about the jury seeing uh, your districts, and so we'll kind of go from there. The, the overall theme is that we tried to maintain distinct communities of interest and protect compact territory and make districts of logically adjacent territory. Um, following logical boundaries, drawing a plan that complies with applicable uh, state and federal laws, mostly those driven by the numbers and the geography of the parish. Uh, as I mentioned last week, it's, it's important to know that the, uh, the districts are drawn based on precincts. The precincts are our building block. The precinct boundaries may follow waterways, may follow uh, drainage canals, and so may, may be odd boundaries. And of course, the result of that may be that it looks interesting on the map, but the important thing we were trying to do is keep uh, communities uh, together to the extent possible and change the district lines as least as we could so as to keep, uh, keep the voters orientated to what they're used to and to not cause any confusion. 
starting in West Calcasieu, districts 11 in the De Quincey Starks area, 12 in the Carlos Denton area, and uh, 15 in the Maplewood area that includes much of sulfur, uh, do not change at all. Th those districts stay exactly where they, they started the process uh, 10 years ago. Uh, District 13 gains a small area uh, north sulfur uh, all the way up to Houston River between Claiborne and Highway 27. District 14 uh, gains the area of North Westlake uh, to, to take that community whole. Uh, in Ward 1, as I mentioned, uh, there had been some discussion of the opportunity for two Gerards and the numbers are just not there at, at this time. Uh, in Ward 1, I want to be clear about one thing because I got this question a couple times. We did not set out to take Gillis away from Ward 1. Uh, Mr. Spell's <coughs> district uh, had to lose a precinct or two. And in having to lose it and looking for what was the most distinct area that could be removed because something had to be removed, um, we identified the kind of distinct community of, of Gillis um, as a rural area that could best attach to the Bell City Hayes, Iowa Labluce, Iowa Labluce Settlement District um, and, and kind of make a rural East Calcasieu district. Um, moving into uh, Ward 1 a little further, there is one single precinct that remains where it started uh, in District 2. Um, District 2, and I'll mention these statistics a little bit later, um, ended up, District 2 with its old boundaries, with its 2003 boundaries, ended up the decade with an African American voting age population of 55%. This is very low and cr cr caused concerns for us with compliance uh, with Justice Department mandates. So although District 2 needed to pick up population, it mostly needed to pick up population um, back inside of Ward 3, where it could pick up some uh, African-American population uh, to comply with the Voting Rights Act. Of course, the Voting Rights Act, as you'll remember from our first meeting, is a, is a congressional mandate that was recently uh, extended by the Congress to last through the 2030 round of redistricting. So compliance with the Voting Rights Act is generally uh, is generally required in, in much of the South, including all of Louisiana. The Moving into Lake Charles, and I'll move over here where it might be easier to see, um, District 10 moved out of Ward 3. So to, to gain the area it gained in the north, it moved out of, out of Ward 3, and its boundary will be Ward Line Road. It will be a Ward 8, Ward 2 district with uh, the addition of the Gillis area. In Ward 3 then, district number 7 shifts east to Ward Line Road. Its current boundary was Tom Abair Road, and so it's shifting to Ward Line Road. Uh, district 6 gains the precinct roughly by the airport um, that goes uh, through Gulf Highway and to the South Park uh, Drive. District 6 loses the area uh, in the north uh, north of McNeese Street. District 8 uh, w was one of the very large districts, and so it lost one, uh, two precincts, uh, generally the area east of Isles and north of Sale Road. District 5 uh, changed demographics a great deal through the course of the decade uh, due to continued African-American population shift into Central Lake Charles and the uh, continued diversity and, and growth of diversity uh, between I-10 and 210. District 5 therefore shifted south principally because of the the shift southeast required it to shift south. Uh, these, these areas needed to be picked up by somebody and uh, District 5 was there to pick them up. District 5 then could withdraw and, and decrease in its uh, core area in Central Lake Charles uh, allowing that to be freed up to populate and support our four protected majority minority districts, districts two, three, four, and nine. District nine also, we did not change districts where we, we didn't have to. District nine also does not change at all because it was right on target and had growth both in its overall population uh, and in its African American population. District four, two, and three were below acceptable deviations and had to grow 
uh, and generally grow in a particular way to find the correct demographic mix uh, to populate those districts. Essentially, you had to move them further into Central Lake Charles. District 4, Gaines, uh, Precinct 322 and 319S, uh, which is generally the area west of Fifth Avenue um, all the way to Kirkman and below 18th Street all the way to West Pan Lake Road. Um, District Two gains the area from District 3 that is west of Enterprise Boulevard and north of Division Street. Uh, this is the entirety of two precincts and then a new precinct split in, in 303. So the area west of Enterprise and north of Division Street shifts from District 3 to District 2. District 3 then gains area. Its current boundary was, was here at 12th Street. Uh, it gains area between 12th and 18th Street, between 3rd Avenue and Ryan Street. And it also gains uh, some area here between West Pre and Lake Road and 18th Street, generally around the mall uh, between Kirkman and, and Lake. The, the District 3, although it has a particular uh, dog leg, it's important to note that the, Lake Charles is one community, and particularly Central Lake Charles is one community of interest. And so the way in which you divide that community of interest is, um, is, is less relevant than in certain, uh, certain other areas of the parish where the voters have different, uh, the, the folks generally that are going to be found in district, the area added to District 3 will uh, go to the same school, shop at the same stores, and, and, and generally conform to the same community of interest. Uh, as the area where District 3 uh, currently ended. So in, in needing to populate those districts, we tried to find and maintain uh, communities of interest. The continued population shift uh, where there was decline north of Interstate 10 uh, and growth between I-10 and 210 um, necessitated those districts essentially coming a little further south and uh, taking into account the, the population shifts within our parish. The, the final plan can be summed up um, as follows. The highlights are that we have complied with the mandates of, of the Voting Rights Act and, and correctly protected our majority minority districts. Um, we have only split three precincts, which is a very low number uh, in comparison. And we have reduced the number of districts that cross the Calcasieu River, which is an important divider in our community, uh, to only one. Uh, where possible, we have kept communities together and kept communities whole, and we've taken into account all of our traditional redistricting principles in attempting to draw geographically compact and, uh, and logical districts uh, wherever possible. The three splits, and I mentioned there are three splits. This is something the public may be interested in because people think of voting at the, the precincts where they, they're used to voting. The precinct in split in 303, which is the Ralph Wilson Elementary School precinct, as I mentioned before, will be split at uh, Enterprise Boulevard with uh, the western part and the eastern part being in different districts. The eastern part remaining with, which is the vast majority of the population in that precinct, <coughs> remaining with District 3 and the western part uh, going to District 2. Um, that, that precinct will continue to vote at the same location. It's just the few hundred people on the west side will now vote in District 2. Um, the other split is in Precinct 320, which votes at the Oak Park Elementary School. That precinct is split at um, 3rd Avenue. So on the eastern side of that precinct, you will vote in District 4. And on the western side of that precinct, you will vote in District 3. Um, both of them will still vote at the same location. The next precinct is Precinct 319 which is assigned to the St. Margaret School. Um, that precinct, the, the northern part, 319 North, which is above 18th Street, will be in District 3, while the southern part, which is below uh, 18th Street, will be in District uh, 4. So there are exactly three splits. The other designations that you see on some of your precinct maps, north, south, east, and west, those were splits that occurred in the last redistricting. Uh, or the redistricting before that. There are only three new splits in, in, in this redistricting. 
The statistics that we mentioned uh, that are a little bit important um, to take into consideration are both the deviations and overall percentages of the various districts. The benchmark data, which let me be clear what benchmark data is, benchmark data is the districts as they existed, not as we are changing them, but as they existed today, so the ones that were drawn in 2000 for 2003, but updated with the data from the 2010 census. So your current districts with 2010 census data. Our benchmark districts were incredibly deviated, and as I mentioned, had a range of um, African American voting age population of 55% all the way to 80%. So there was an incorrect uh, dispersal of population which put at risk the required protection of, of District 2 as a majority minority district. Um, as we have changed things and as we have made modifications, uh, we have ended up with districts that have the following um, statistics. District 1 has a total population of 13,319, which is 4.6% African American. It has a voting age population that is 4.5% African American and a registration that's 4.7% African American. And we have the statistics where we looked at uh, the, our Asian population, our American Indian population, uh, our Hispanic population, as is required by the Voting Rights Act. But because of those numbers, which were very low in Calcasieu Parish, and the fact that there were not uh, any uh, compactness to them, there was fairly equal dispersal, uh, there's no requirement to um, create or uh, look at districts other than African American. So when I mention African American, it's not because um, we, are, we, we did not look at the full demographic data of the parish and how it affects everyone, but those are the, the districts that are particularly protected by the Voting Rights Act and uh, receive our particular attention under, under retrogression analysis. District 2 is improved to a 58.5% voting age African American population, which is a considerable increase from where it started and it, with a registra African American registration of 61.4. So we feel very confident about that uh, from, the, from the Justice Department's point of view that that will comply with what they're looking for and will protect the, uh, that district. District 3 ends up with a African American voting age population of 65.7 and a African American registration of 69%. Um, district 4 ends up with an African American voting age population of 65% um, and a registration of 69.2%. And District 9 ends up with an African American voting age population of 59.1% and a registration of 66.1%. All these numbers are very good and I think very solid from the point of view of the Justice Department. Um, of course, to reiterate, the total population, which is of course what we're working with, it's one of those things that are layers upon layers in this. Voting age population means the population over 18, whether they are registered or not. Registration, of course, is people who have bothered to register to vote with the Calcasieu Registrar's Office. Uh, although those, th that data is important and it makes up your electorate and we look to it and we want to make sure it's compliant, uh, we are driven not by that data but by the population data. And on the population data, I'll mention that we have one of the lowest overall ranges of deviation uh, that we've had before. The smallest district will be District 8, which is negative 4.1 percent uh, below ideal, uh, which is important. Uh, we try to anticipate growth. That's, that's a growth area, and uh, we try to appropriately consider that. The largest uh, district, which will be over by 4.5, is District 12, and that's principally because we left it as it was. Uh, although we expect it probably will grow as well, it was one of those districts we didn't change. So that's how it ends up high. District 1, which had been the most overly deviated, uh, ended up with a deviation of only 3.6. The African American population, now I tried to mention voting age population and registration uh, information for the record, uh, and, and, and so we have a nice uh, set of data for the, for the Department of Justice. But I'll say on, on pure population, which is what we build the districts from, the African American populations uh, of districts 2 is 60.3, district 3 is 69.6, district 4 is 68.2, and 
and District 9 is 63.5. I feel these are all good solid numbers that will, uh, will help us have smooth sailing at the Justice Department. And um, I will say this because it's also been a question. We looked seriously, as I feel we were required to do by the Voting Rights Act, at the possibility of a fifth majority minority district. And the numbers are simply not there to support it. The African American population of the parish is 24.6%. And the dispersal around the parish uh, to various communities from um, De Quincey to Iowa to Benton um, mean that there's no compact contiguous way to create an additional district, um, which of course four is already 27.7% uh, of the jury. Um, but we, we didn't stop there. We did look uh, to try to make an, an effort to determine whether there would be a mechanism um, of creating a, a fifth district. Uh, th there was not one that would comply with traditional redistricting principles and be sufficiently compact and maintain uh, traditional communities of interest uh, such that it would not be a racial gerrymander. And in any event, it would have made other districts ineffective by bringing them uh, far too low. So although these statistics are very detailed, we wanted to mention them so the public has the full information. Uh, many of these uh, redistrictings around the state are being done uh, in haste. Some of them are uh, not as open and transparent as Calcasieu has tried to be. I think you can commend yourselves and be very proud. There were hundreds and hundreds of hits on the website. Uh, you've made a great deal of effort to allow the, the public an opportunity to, to give its input. And uh, I think you can commend yourself for your opportunity to allow the public to be heard and for your willingness to share information. And that's why we wanted to give all the data for the record. Uh, so that it is out there before the public comment period uh, begins. <coughs> and that's all I have. If there are no questions from y'all, uh, I'll, I'll be done. Okay. Okay. I just, first, first of all, I just wanted to tell uh, Kay, just thank you for the work that you've done. You, I commend you for doing uh, an outstanding job on this. Uh, you see what goes involved is entailed in doing that, and it amazes me how much work. Brian, also to your staff, uh, y'all did a great job. Uh, before we go to any public comment, is there any jurors that would like to have any discussion? If not, we have a few speakers tonight. Uh, I'll call up uh, Mr. O.C. Norton. And if you would, sir, please just state your name and address for the record and just stick to the item, please. Uh, that's on the agenda tonight. Thank you, Mr. President, for letting me speak and the body also. Just state okay. your name and address for the record. O.C. Norton, 6222 Lofton Road, Lake Charles, La Blue Settlement. Thank you, sir. Continue. I guess I want to direct my comments about redistricting to Mr. Scott and Mr. Landry. Y'all inherited some of uh, District 10, and on my campaign I had made friends with these people here, and uh, they expressed some drainage problems down there, Mr. Landry. I'm sure you'll be hearing about it pretty quick. So. Uh, I told them even though they was pulled out of District 10 that I felt in my heart that you would take care of them and Mr. Scott also, both of y'all. And uh, having said that, I went and looked at their problem. And their problem is pretty easy to fix, but there's a lot of entities involved that has to get their heads together to get this done. I addressed Mr. McMillan before the meeting and uh, he said he had come up with a plan some years ago. Mr. Norton, just excuse me. Uh, are, you, are we speaking on the redistricting? you have any questions or comments on the redistricting? Are, yes, you, sir, talking this, about, this, are you talking about a drainage issue? No, sir, this is about the up. redistricting and well, uh, the, the police jurisdiction. I, I just don't want you to here. drift off of the, uh, the, the redistricting issue and, and, and make it a drainage issue because that would have to be addressed at a different time. Well, I understand that, but uh, I wanted to alert the two police jurors that uh, they'll be inheriting this problem. Yes, sir. I'm sure they're aware. And uh, I'm sure they're aware of it. Yes, if they aren't, they will be soon. And I would like to thank uh, uh, the people that 
extended the district to the north. That takes in all of my kinfolk. So y'all help me out there with that uh, extension to the north. Okay. My nieces, nephews, brothers. So thank y'all for letting thank, me speak. Thank, thank you, Mr. Norton. Okay, next we have Mr. Harrison Franklin. If you would just state your name and address for the record. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, just stick to the item on the agenda. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, Name is Harrison Franklin, 5637 West Pinewood Drive, Lake Charles. And I was currently a, in the 10th District, Mr. Stelly. And I think Mr. Cole addressed just about every concern that I had. Uh, as most of y'all may know or may not know, West Pinewood was part of that 10th District of Mr. Stelly, which was basically a little island out from our way and basically 100 yards from the city limits of Lake Charles. So that always troubled me back <clears throat> when I moved out there in 96. And I think it got put out there like in that 10th district in 03. So we always worried about whether we was going to get the representation and not going to reflect on Mr. Stelly done a wonderful job in knowing him for over 30 years. Uh, but that always concerned me because the encroachment of the city limits was coming all around us. And as things grow, you know, you get a lot of other, the traffic and other things that kind of take the country living and kind of incorporates it in the city without the benefits of the city. So that always concerned us. But Mr. Cole and the committee put us into the seventh district, I think gonna be Mr. Landry which is a bit which we would be better served, although I would prefer District 9, but looking at the numbers, I realized they couldn't do it because of the numbers wouldn't balance out. So i just like to commend the committee for what they've done. Uh, it really has balanced out what we was looking for on West Pinewood. Uh, we look forward to working to, with Mr. Landry, and maybe the next 10 years we can get put District 9, but we certainly are glad to be back on this part in Ward 3. I think we, you know, we'd be better served, even though we was in Ward 3, we'd be better served with a bigger group than uh, Ward, just a segment of Ward 8. Again, I'd like to just thank each and every one of y'all for your hard work, Mr. Bean, the jury, uh, Mr. Cole and A committee, y'all to be commended. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. Appreciate it. Uh, uh -huh. uh, Mark Parham, please, to state your name and address for the record. Mark Parham, 3065 uh, Old Town Road, Lake Charles. Uh, I've just got two quick questions. Um, if for any reason this plan does not go through, your election continues as the current districts? Mm -hmm. uh, what, go ahead, Mr. Cole. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, the uh, elections would not occur uh, if, if a redistricting plan is not pre-cleared by the Justice Department. Uh, we do not anticipate that happening. Uh, we feel this plan will receive pre-clearance by the Justice Department. Um, and I understand that in, unless something comes out tonight, uh, the, the jury, I feel confident, uh, will, will consider it appropriately and, and perhaps adopt it uh, very quickly so as to make sure that happens. But uh, my understanding between uh, the Attorney General's opinion issued in 91, which delayed elections around the state, and uh, from speaking with the Secretary of State's office, is there would be uh, no election if a pre-cleared redistricting plan is not received back uh, by August the 29th. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, last question. Uh, hypothetically speaking, suppose a person were considering a run and now he finds himself in a different district. What is this going to, how is this going to affect him? And like this gentleman just spoke, Mr. Uh, Norton just spoke, people he had already spoken to, and now they are no longer going to be in a district that he considered. Now suppose this person that's considering a run 
and he thought he was in a certain district, and it's changed. People will, Mr. President, Go people ahead. will run in the districts in which they live uh, pursuant to the redistricting. Um, if your district has shifted, uh, then you will run in the district that you live in post, post redistricting. Does that answer your question, Mr. Plum? Okay. I'll let that one go. All right, and most, most of y'all know by now I'm a member of the Tea Party. I'm also a board member. Uh, we've been here for a year now with our presence, mainly to educate ourselves and to educate the public on the workings of the police jury. And very enlightening, I have to admit. Uh, with that being said, on behalf of the Southwest Louisiana Tea Party, its officers, and the board members, we wish to express our gratitude to Mr. Beam, Mr. Cole, and all the staff, preparations for the uh, police jury maps. Uh, we've made ourselves knowledgeable of the Civil, uh, the Voting Rights Act, and we applaud this administration for uh, bringing this map about, and we'll support it 100%. Thank you, Mr. Parham. Thank you all. Appreciate you being here You're tonight. Late, Okay, I don't have anybody in. I have one uh, one speaker before you, Mr. Sykes. Go ahead, Mr. Ellis Hassan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Brian, in um, since we're talking about voting, I think figure now is a good time. We have a couple of uh, precincts that Les and I both uh, represent that vote that used to vote at the Carlos Fire Department. It's going to be that's now moved to Cypress Cove. Can you get with the registrar of voters? Or what's the normal process? Do they send out anything? No, nobody's been notified of anything. Uh, election day in April, the concern I have is that that road's going to be fit, going to the fire department's going to be filled with people turning around. There's safety issues. That's why we had it changed. Kathy can explain the legal procedures for getting that change and who's notified, and then. Let me just add on to, to that as a matter of information. Um, each of your packets, of course, that was for y'all, but it's mm -hmm. cross-referenced. But we, I'm trying to remember if we put the polling places on the website. I think we have it, but if not, we can add it. And it, it is on there. So we can make sure for any precincts, for anybody across the parish, if they're not sure where they are to vote, and make an extra effort on that one that has changed recently to okay. to ensure it. So we'll we'll be sure to not overlook that. Okay. But I'll ask Kathy to address that. I was just going to say that we are planning a front page ad. For okay. That Wednesday, Friday, and the day of the election, uh, starting with the election on April 30th. Okay. So they will know through that manner. And of course, like Brian said, it's on the website, our polling place list. Okay. It lists the elementary school. Thank you. Okay. And then, uh, one more thing, if there's certain places or, or ways of communicating that you know where very uh, large populations in, in the Carlos area meet and so forth, that's a lot of times that's really the best way to do it is okay. informally. So we can discuss that with you individually on how to best do that. We we'll okay. also have signs posted at the fire station. I don't know if that will alleviate the turning around problem. Though. That's what I would, maybe like at the end of Volunteer Road, something sure. like that, just to alert them to go to the school instead. Yeah, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hassan. Mr. Size. All right, thank you, Mr. President. Um, my, my comment was actually for, uh, for Mr. Farnham. I just want to, to let him know when he said that, uh, there was a, that when the things changed, it changed for a particular person, that they couldn't, you know, they would think about running in a certain area. Well, you know, as all but four of us jurors had things changed also. You know, we had we we inherited other places too. So whoever that other person wasn't the only one affected. Uh, you know, all but four of us was also affected by the change. Also, so, thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Size, Ms. Griffin. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. In reference, Mr. Bean, uh, direct to you. In reference to the question with uh, changing the voting precincts and where they're going to vote at, will their card be good if they change and have to go to whereas they were at 301, go to 303, will they be able to show that card and still vote? Or will their card have to be updated to say that they're in the right voting precinct? Uh, that's one question. That's, will it be? Yes, ma'am. What, what will happen in the ordinance that 
will be presented to you probably on April 7th if, if we stay on the current calendar. Uh, any precinct changes will have to be passed as a part of the redistricting submittal. So that becomes official and that by the time the uh, qualifying and so forth for the election in, in late August, they will have those reissued. Okay. And I think just like Mr. Uh, Hassan said with the Carlos area, any area that has a split, that would be something to help uh, make sure is communicated. But Kay can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe any of those split precincts will have the same voting polling place okay. that they've been having. Okay. I just don't want to take a chance on anybody being turned away or just a lack of miscommunication and they're not aware. So uh, not only will uh, our constituents feel free that they can vote if there is a change, but those uh, persons that's voting at the polls will also be educated into the fact that they will be good. That's good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. Uh, Mr. Fornham. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to just make one thing real clear. The April 30th election will not be changed at all. Everybody will vote exactly where they vote today. And the redistricting plan, if adopted, won't become effective until much later in the year. Is that correct? Yes, the redistrict, the uh, April 30th election, Mr. Farnham is referring to, of course, is the, uh, the referendum on the expansion of gaming in the parish, specifically the Mojito Point proposal. And I think other than one special district, and I don't remember if it's Houston River, I kind of forget, there's nothing else on the ballot, but you're correct. This plan, once it goes through your approval, submittal to the state and Justice Department, pre-clearance by the Justice Department, that's why August 29th is important because that's when qualifying begins for the October 22nd election for a police jury. And there's other offices, but for your purposes. So yes, this is for the October 22nd election, nothing prior. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Farnham. Ellis, do you have something? Yes, sir. Brian and Les, just to clarify, the, the movement from the Carlos Fire Department to Cypress Cove Elementary will be for this election. It has nothing to do with redistricting. Correct. That, that just the, happens. The, the election be, in April will be the first right. time that those that are used to going to the Carlos Fire Department will now go to the newly built Cypress Cove Elementary. Correct. It's more for, and it's done more for convenience and safety because of the, the fire department being there. So thank you. Mr. President, in response yes. to all of the questions about polling place, uh, one thing to reiterate is uh, no polling places are changed even by the redistricting. Although precincts are split, mm -hmm. those precincts will remain at the same polling place. So if you go into, uh, you know, St. Margaret's School or Ralph Wilson Elementary School where you're used to voting, the commissioners will say, uh, you know, you're, you're in the book for this set of machines versus you're in the book for this other set of machines. And there are a number of places around the parish where one site is the site for multiple precincts. It'll just be those three uh, will we'll join those. So, again, no polling places are changed even by the, by the redistricting. Thank you, uh, Kay. Appreciate it. Uh, before we adjourn, I'd like to uh, extend anybody else in the audience who would like to speak. Seeing none, uh, we thank you all for being here tonight and uh, hearing y'all's input, so we appreciate it. Motion to adjourn. Second. Have a motion. So, oh. Second. Okay, I have a motion to adjourn in a second. Receive the report or no? Okay. Uh, public hearing. Okay. We are adjourned.